just fell on you. <laughs> and now you're mine. Hey, hey, hey. What's your podcast? Hey. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome to our podcast. This is the first time where we're going visually live. And we are two geeky ladies talking about issues in our lives. Relationship gossip. And a case of the politics all while geeking and having fun. Let's geek! Hey! And I am very, very happy because several things are happening in this episode. This yes. is an episode where we're recording it, video. So we got some content for y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And then on this one, this is our first guest to ever be on our yes. show. And it's one awesome. of my closest yes. friends, Mr. Avi Hamilton, who is a witch, because we're talking about witchcraft today. And then on top of that, he is also a witch priest. And he is going to be communicating that with us today. So Yasmin, Avi, welcome. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here with you guys. And hello, everyone. I'm so Are you very excited, excited? Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> so I'm on honestly, our podcast. Can I just oh. say this really quickly? I am honestly myself very excited because I don't, you know, I've always come across, you know, spiritual healers, which is all my life, but it was never like a sit down, let's chat about it and talk about it. So when Catherine, you brought this to my attention. I was like, yes, I am. Because she originally was like, maybe we could go on the internet and look for somebody. And I was like, why not call my friend? <laughs> like, and say, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trouble, right? Yeah. So basically, on our podcast, as you know, the format, e like each episode, we're geeking on something and we're just having fun. So, what is the first thing that does come to your mind when you think of witches, Avi? That's, uh, I think more, they're healers, they're wise. Um, they use their psychic ability to help anyone comes in their path and turn into obstacles into prosperity. Um, I think we all need guidance, um, huge guidance. So how do you feel about which people, actually, let me not say which is, but how do you feel about people like me who are completely unaware of this type of subject that would say something like, first thing when I think of a witch is Sabrina, the teenage witch. <laughs> yep. no, that's true. I think of charm, charmed with Michelle. And I think of all these like, hocus cool, pocus. Yeah, the hocus pocus, pocus um, Halloween town. Mm -hmm. I, I, Harry I, I, Potter. Hufflepuff yes, house. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm going to include Harry Potter. The Harry Potter, I, at least in the witch community, that's a whole different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. Yeah, actually, there was a, there was a um, Harry Potter, there was a, a wand, um, I guess was um, custom made for Lori Cabot. Um, Harry Potter Corporation um, custom a wand for her. It was really nice. That was a, probably one of the best gifts she ever got. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. When we were talking about TV shows, um, I would say Charmed. I feel like, uh, of course, a lot of things were accurate. Like they have done their research about the holidays, about the Sabbaths. Uh, um, the, the Book of Shadows was done very nicely and very well. Um, of course, we the do not- The Book of Shadows are real? Well, I'm sorry? The Book of Shadow is real? It is very real. Uh, oh, wow. It's like our Bible to us <laughs> really yes it is wow and, you know how you guys um or how christians pray in their bible well that's us like with the book of shadows we use that for our spell works um in rituals um, so how did you get into it though in the first place like what made you want to come to this because a lot of people don't know that I, witchcraft is religion i mean you were one of the first people to tell me that and i was thought you were joking you remember like I thought, yeah. like Yasmin, I really thought he was joking yeah. when he first told me. Can you imagine me coming up to you and saying, hey, I'm a witch. And you think like, is this a movie? <laughs> yeah. But you know, hey, it's that's so funny. I mean, it's funny that you do mention that because everyone goes through that mentality as well, where it's like, oh, they're real. I mean, but it's the same thing with other religion. It's just like, we don't question it. Unfortunately, you know, people who practice it, 
like they they always get that that face and it's always that negative stigma you know it's not it's not a person wearing a costume and then you know worshiping something that's not not even it it's it's not no it's it's a huge responsibility i would say very huge responsibility um of course you are going to get you know naysayers and um you are going to get people are going to have that negative impact because they're holding on that image of what um christianity has um looked at us or gave us that um that name that vision um we are terrible we do devil worship and stuff like that uh, number one it, witchcraft is a celtic heritage we don't believe in the devil or demons or evil god or goddess um, but we do have a God and a goddess. Um, we do not worship, we honor, we honor our ancestors, we honor our God and goddess. That's something that's been around for thousands of years. Um, if you look in ancient books, um, there is uh, say more than 2000 years we've been prosecuted. So a lot of things has been washed out um, historically spiritually a lot of things has been burned out from um, pre-christians so how did you get into it like originally like what what age were you like how yeah. what drew you to it <laughs> i was actually eight years old <laughs> um i remember once again um i was starting to get like the psychic ability um getting a lot more um deja vus and i've been when I was seven years old, I remember, um, of course, my parents had to deal with a, someone like me <laughs> growing up. Um, when I was seven years old, I remember I was, I had this dream, this, this unusual dream. I was playing with these kids, were like passing balls, you know, back and forth. And I have no clue who they are, but in my tuition, like somehow in my dream, I knew who they were for some odd reason. Okay. Um, when the ball was passing me, I was trying to grab the ball and a, on the street and a truck hit me so hard that I, I woke up. I don't know if I bit my mouth, but my mouth was bleeding and I felt so much pain. I would never forget that day. Um, two days later, I found out a boy actually got hurt from a bus Wow. Um, in our neighborhood. So um, they had to put signs out to put, you know, for caution signs. Mm -hmm. So, and of course I told my mom, she was like, no, that, you know, you just had a nightmare. And then she was like, sh shocked <laughs> what happened and what I told her. And so um, then eight and nine years old came along. I saw on TV, a very mysterious woman in black with big glasses and, you know, dark hair <laughs> and I was about nine years old I was like who's that amazing creature <laughs> on tv so when I started to get in middle school image would start popping in my head of her face so I started googling you know I don't know who she was or who her name was so I started googling it you know mysterious woman in black uh, black makeup um her face popped up and it was Lori Cabot and so that's when I started doing research about witchcraft and read a lot of books and a lot of traditions and a lot of other covens about the subject. And that got me into this path. So where was the first place you looked? Like, was it, did you go straight to the internet? Like, this is I, a really good witchcraft. Did you make a phone call? Did you travel somewhere? I actually read a lot of books. You cannot get full information of witchcraft um, through online. I'm going to be honest with you. I have done it. You do not get full information mm -hmm. online. You have to read books and you got to know who you're reading. Got to know the author background. What was their tradition? What is their coven called? All that good stuff. So you know what path to take in life. So how do covens work? Like, can you just join one? Is it like a frat or sorority where it's like you get initiated? Like, how does that process work? Yeah. Are they are open covens and they are private covens, so it really depends. Yeah, um, I've, heard, I've heard of that. You know, so this is new to me. Yeah, open covens and co so what would be the difference? 
Um, open covens, they are usually will invite as much as people they can um, and teach them and guide them through their traditions and through witchcraft. Um, and private ones usually, private covens are usually only three to 13 people. Um, and Is there a reason for that? Uh, you know, it's there's sometimes they just want to have their groups um, in certain of um, traditions. Um, sometimes they don't want new people come in and changing their traditions or changing their um, path of life. Um, so they sometimes they just keep it in family. So are you part of one or can you create one? I'm a, I'm a part of a coven. It's called the Cabot Coven. So hmm. um, yeah, yeah, that's um, the way I'm practicing and teaching and educating other people as well. Um, if I have any other questions, I usually run into um, a, a higher priest or a priestess. So I'm kind of curious about something too, because, you know, um, I don't know if the word witchcraft is a general term, but like, how would you define what witchcraft is essentially? Okay, uh, witchcraft is, uh, well, of course, it's a, it's a spiritual path of life. It is a religion. Mm -hmm. It is, in, we look at it as an, an ancient religion. Um, if you look in the Bible, the word witch is on there. So it's going back over almost 4,000 years. Um, I would say it is one of the um, oldest religion in Europe, actually. Right. And we just, uh, it, you know, I would say there is no, the word witch, it's mixed it with, it's dribbled with many languages brought together. Mm -hmm. Some it's mixed with the Anglo-Saxon language, some from the Celtic languages. Like, like I said, there's no such thing in a religion called Wicca. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. Say, <laughs> there's no such thing someone's called a Wiccan. <laughs> Um, but where Gardner, did that come from though? Where did that stereotype come from? Um, Gardner actually invented it. Um, Gardner? And Who's that? He is actually a witch. Um, he, he said he, he found the word Wicca in a new forest coven in England mm -hmm. in the early 1900s. And he brought it with him into his own coven. And he added an extra C in the 60s. So W-I-C-C-A actually means a wise male and W-I-C-C-E actually means a wise female. All right, I was just gonna ask um, because it's it's quite interesting that you say, you know, that it's, it's just a term that uh, this person uh, created. So uh, what essentially is a pagan then? Or pagan pagan yeah. is actually, we're not pagans, witches um, are from the Celts. Pagan is actually um, part of the Roman Empire. It's a, it's a Latin term in south of Europe. Okay. So near like the, um, the seas below, um, I would say pagan is, I, I, I'm not gonna pronounce it correctly. It's an old Latin word, pagan, I mean, it's something like that. Um, it's people who practice um, different mythology in the Roman Empire. Hmm. Okay, and then to, you know, um, as I started learning more about witches around the world and, um, you know, as everybody practiced, I realized everybody practices different. So I'm wondering, uh, it's, is that true? Like everyone has their own. I, everyone has their own traditions, but we all practice the same arts. I think. Uh, because it's been around four centuries. Now, witchcraft is not an umbrella term for any other magical religions out there. There's hundreds of them. And we're not an umbrella because witchcraft is a heritage from the Celtic tribe. It's of course has been silenced over 2000 years for persecution. It is, witchcraft is pre-Christian. Mm -hmm. um, like in Africa, who does magic in Africa is not witchcraft. Um, they have their own spiritual path. People who practice shamanism, uh, voodoo and that's not witchcraft. I see. Okay. And then, you know, you know I both mentioned though, um, I don't know much too about it because, mm -hmm. you know, where I'm from, that's too superstitious. We don't touch it, but we do have witch doctors where I'm from. But mm -hmm. I, based on what you said, I wouldn't know because we really don't, you know, even 
you know, associate ourselves with the topic of it. So I'm just as blind as, you know, going in, just mentioning that because you, you know. Yes, well, in Africa, we have a lot of shamans as well um, because they're healers in Africa. They're very well known. If you go to um, Brazil, um, some parts of Brazil. Now, you're going to find some witches in Brazil because a lot of Celtics and, you know, we're talking about more than 400 years, they have been traveling. Uh, you know, I mean, um, they've been traveling all over the world um, over 400 years ago. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there are Celtics growing everywhere in magic, witchcraft tradition everywhere. So um, I know there's a lot of witches that have been practicing in Brazil, Argentina right now. A um, lot of Celtic heritage is over there as well. And not just in Europe. And then... And- since you brought up uh, Christians a little bit, th- this always, um, I always get curious about it and uh, who better to ask, right? And it's, um, why is there so much criticism from the Catholic and Christians when it comes to witches? Because, you know, normally when you talk, because it, it's true, you know, you, you a, a Christian or Catholic comes along and if someone's openly, you know, they're, they're wearing, um, Sorry, what did you say was called the a pentacle? A pentacle, yeah. And they see that immediately, you know. Of course, they they're gonna say, you know, like you're not about God and stuff like that. And so I I truly believe some of that comes from that not everybody knows the history. Yeah. Well, uh, that's very easy to explain, and I'm I'm sorry to use this, but I think Christianity want to use a, a scapegoat. <laughs> Um, over two, three hundred years ago, when um, you, we can go back to Salem, when people, you know, they were afraid. Um, people are speaking. Um, they're they're more. I, I'm gonna say they're more standing up to themselves. They are sovereigns. They're taking more initiative they were afraid that women speaking up to themselves um they're afraid of women who didn't you know didn't had a husband or it's, it's so much reasons you know and witches always have been so, uh, so you know sovereigns we uh-huh. always stood up to ourselves um we can always say yes we yes i will do that no i would not do that and they were afraid of that the people with higher power were afraid of that you got to think about it, though. Back in the Salem time, it used to be like, she's 23 and she's not married. Burn the witch! Yeah, oh, my were, God. Th- that's she's true. 18 yeah. and she knows two plus two is four. Burn the witch! Because <laughs> like, in, you know, in, they were accusing each other back then uh, during Salem. Yeah, because you have to understand, in the, in, the, in the Celtic heritage, in thousands of years, we always believe to be a sovereign and have your own power. We, we're healers, we're doctors, we are psychic ability, and people were afraid of that. They were afraid of people who were independent, and we didn't need um, others to take care of ourselves or to work or to work uh, under people, and they were afraid of that in thousands of years, so they want to use a scapegoat, like, oh, you know, why is all our crops dying? Who is responsible for that? Yeah. So they had to um, put a finger on something or someone, and that was one of it. So I guess uh, my next question is because um, it follows up with that is like you know um, technically you kind of answered it, but it's um, why do people when they think of uh, witches they always associate it with like devil worshiping? That's that's another scapegoat question. <laughs> okay. um, I would, to be honest, I think they were afraid. I really think they were afraid. And I think they were trying to use, uh, you know, it, it didn't make sense. We're, we're witches, but we also, witches are devil worship. It was, it was so confusing. And still today, they still can get that. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the word Lucifer, it, it actually is a it's a it's a um, Hebrew word. Actually, it's Hebrew it means northern star, northern light. But when that northern star fell from the back then, they call it heavens. They thought it was a fallen angel. 
Mm. I'm so frightened, you know? Um, so of course they will try to use that word and that term and to use it on us and we're worship, we're doing evil magic. Um, we should not be doing magic. We should be, you know, focusing on doctors. Mm. Not every solution comes from a doctor. Sometimes solutions come from a spiritual healers who mm. know what they're doing. Because remember, when you're looking at um, taking medications and pills, you're just covering the symptoms. You're not really um, healing anyone. So, Interesting. And that's what they're scared of until today. They're still, well, today actually came a full circle. Let's go with that, especially with this pandemic. Yeah. Doctors, yeah, doctors are actually going to see, um, I would say natural healers now. They're looking at organic remedies yeah. and medicines. They're looking at that right now. So that's very interesting how they're coming to us for, for guidance and help. And that pentacle, by the way, that circle represent wisdom. That wisdom protects you. That star represents any animal or human creatures walk on earth. You've got the head, the arms, and the legs. And that circle protects you. It's the, will, the wisdom, the all, the Tao. Wisdom protects you. That's why that became a huge symbol for us. Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I've always seen it, but I don't think I've ever <laughs> actually explained what that yeah, well, I watched the news and someone put, a, I guess the kids were putting graffiti and they were putting um, a pentacle. And I think one of the girl named Anchor Shows, she was like, look, and they put a sign of the devil. That's a hate crime. Yeah. And she committed one without even knowing she did. So, you know, I mean, we're, 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 we're taking that back. Yeah. And um, a lot of witches are fighting for that. And, you know, I mean, because our pentacle is our sacred thing, you know, and it's, a, it's our symbol. It's huge. It's a Celtic mythology. You can look about it, read about it. You know, it's just sure. the, the way of life. You know, since we've already talked about it and established that, you know, witchcraft is uh, a religion, do you feel like we need to start um, kind of normalizing this conversation and then the idea of witches and what they practice should be a respected religion? I think every religion should be definitely a respected religion and for, for witchcraft law in the federal law um, protection, I think everyone have rights to practice and especially witchcraft, especially like when we're mentioning, you know, um, you know, parents who are witches and having babies, yeah. um, having a newborn. We do not force them into our religion. We believe every religion should be sacred and should be yeah. safe by under the eye. And we, if they want to pick a path of their own, we believe there's room for everybody. And especially we do not recruit, witches do not recruit. That's the last thing. You, we believe you need to come on your own for this journey because it's a very, a very um, hard journey. It's, um, it's not easy. It's definitely a lot of work. Yeah. What are the ways, like, what are the ways of, you know, witchcraft? Is there like, you know, rules like the seven command, the 10 commandments or something well, like that? Every, every, every book usually have, of course, commandment. Um, ours is usually 13. We have 13. Oh, yeah, 13 um, yes. commandments? Yes. Or? Oh. We have 13 rules. But the first rule we follow is the main one. Do what you will, but no, don't harm no one. It means you can do whatever you like, but don't harm anyone. Because we believe in threefold. Do you want to tell us the most important ones from the 13? Because I don't know if we have enough time to cover all 13, but hopefully, you know, we can list them later. But do you want to name some of the most important ones? The print one, well, for me, the print one is... Well, they're all important, of course. Yeah, of course, of course. The well, ones that, I guess, one, the stand one, out to a person like me. Oh, the ones stood out that we don't recruit. That's the, the biggest thing. Yeah, that would be a stereotype. That's something I would think, you know, because you know, I'm a Christian. So, you know, I would think not going into this, oh, they're trying to recruit me. They're clearly evil. They're going to put a spell on me. And that's apparently one of the things that is against your rules. We don't recruit. And, and the one is we treat every 
priest or high priest equally. We treat every member of the coven as our own. Those are one of it. And we treat other traditions equally because at the end of the day, we're all witches and we practice the same thing. We practice the same holiday. There's no any other holidays. And um, of course we all wear black. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, not like Wizard of Oz, you know, like yeah. there's a evil yeah. witch <laughs> wearing yeah. all black. And the, the good one the wearing, good witch and then <laughs> Yeah, she's wearing pink with a crown on her head and with a star wand. Very interesting concept here. Yeah. But no, we uh, it's if you look in our history books and uh, the Celtic books in history, we were black and it is a reason for it because black actually um, draws in light in our body. So we feel more awake and more alert. Mm. Um, it's actually good for your vocal sounds too, actually. Except for when you're in the sun. <laughs> you don't want to wear black then. <laughs> oh, black trust me. <laughs> Wait, what? This thing, until it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wear black every single day, even um summer. He actually yeah. because black makes me very cool inside for I, I guess because I'm just so used to it. Um when I wear color, I feel hot. <laughs> what does witchcraft entail? Like what are the normal practices that you guys would do within the religion? in our religion, well, we have eight holidays a year and we always stop that one holiday and look in, pa in our past and how far we become spiritually, physically, mentally, <laughs> how far we, we grown our gifts and how um, we, we, we grown as a person. Um, so usually like this is our, imp the most important time of our month is this holiday. Yeah. It's called Samhain, it's not called Halloween. Halloween is a Christian holiday. Okay. <laughs> mm, nope. <laughs> it is. Um, no, I can tell you, this is where I come in from the Christian side. We got to just, we got to do the quotation mark Christian. Yeah, because, you know, Christians don't really mess with Halloween. <laughs> well, maybe not Halloween. But if you think about the Catholic and Christians, you know, you, say what you will, but you guys still celebrate it because you wear your costumes. Yeah. You, know, you can't do yeah. this without saying uh, you go to a Halloween party. Uh, you, yeah. you may well, not okay, be celebrating okay. it in the church. Because well, because the Halloween in the Christian um community was actually was called All Hallows Eve. Yeah. Exactly. It was yeah, to yeah. celebrate the you know the death, like kind of like with um Mexico's um what's it called um Cinco Dia de la Muerte. Yeah, yeah, Dia de la Muerte. Yeah. Uh -huh. Dia de la Muerte. Yeah. So that is very similar concept with the All Hallows Eve. Um, but they kind of got it from our holiday called Samhain. And we usually, ex we usually celebrate on October 31st to the 1st of November. We usually celebrate in the witching hour. That's midnight. Mm. Um, we, um, it, it's a very important time. This is when we dress up our, our, our fine things in life. So if you, we gonna dress up is what we wanna become in New Year's in our um, upcoming new year. So like if I want to dress up, work in a bank in the future or have a lot more money or get promoted somewhere, I will have dress up like with my suit and tie with money hanging out in my pocket. Um, or if I want to dress up like a beautiful butterfly and get um, having that um, inspiration in life, you know, dress up like a fairy. Um, if you want to be a great artist, you know, dress up one of your favorite artists. Do you know what I mean? So stuff like that. That's, we do not have horns. We do not wear fangs and stuff like that or vampire teeth. We well, yeah, I mean, that question's answered. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, I have a cousin, you know, bringing up vampires because um, my cousin, I guess, stumbled, you know, again, the YouTube rabbit hole. She stumbled yeah. upon uh, some video about vampires. And I guess because, you know, she she has no idea about witches and, you know, um, uh, vampires. And she wasn't aware that there are actual people who practice vampires. And because the way yeah. they're dressed, she associated with people who are dressed as witches. So she was- You just sit there as a person practicing this religion and just be like, you're a vampire. Oh, okay. But like, oh, 
Like, do y'all do something like that or no? Dude, sorry. <laughs> no, you just be like, oh, you're, it, it's kind of something like, oh, I'm a witch. Oh, I'm a vampire. Oh, you're a vampire. Oh, I see. Oh, good for you. And then you just turn around and be like, wacko. Like, do y'all do something like that or no? No. No? We, okay. we make sure we, we respect everyone. We, we, we want to make sure because whatever you say to someone else, because you don't want to say that to someone else because you're, you're, you know, you don't want to criticize people. You know what I mean? You, you, we all have been criticized. You know what I mean? If I bumped into you, you wouldn't say something like, you bumped into me, you got the right witch today. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> like, I'm telling you now, I would so make so many witch jokes. I'm like, witch, what we doing now? <laughs> like, I would, oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, well, me. <laughs> but I cannot, I can't really say about vampire because I never run into one. I've seen them, of course, on TV. Yeah, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was a Wendy show. Um, I could be mistaken. It's not Wendy Williams. It wasn't. She it gonna was. talk about it, but she ain't gonna bring it on her show. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, I know it was someone's talk show. What was it on? She ain't gonna bring it on her show. What was that talk show? She, it, if it's not her, then it's that top model. Oh, um, oh thanks. Thanks. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, she brought a vampire on her. Yeah, she did. Wait, actually, why do I remember this? It sounded familiar. And he had like long black hair in a weird suit. Actually, it wasn't a weird suit. He was wearing some kind of like gothic suit. I don't remember. Just yeah, it was a very old episode. That's something familiar to me. Yes, but you know, of course, I I I turned it off quickly before he opened his mouth. I do <laughs> he not. Told me he, was, he said he was an engineer in his for like free time, and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm a vampire. The top of I think. What do you do? Oh, I'm an engineer on the side. Like you know, just do computer work. Like. But I always feel like you know. <laughs> You know, I'm hearing you, and it's no just to you, Catherine, because I, you know, I love you and stuff like that. But it's like conversations like that is why I feel like the the witches that I've met before, it's like they're very kind and thoughtful before they say things, kind of like how you're saying. Because you know, when you speak, sometimes you don't understand what you're saying. It's kind of borderline, really, like too much it's very you hurtful. have to be careful what you say what you yeah. think because you're because putting it in the universe let's do the roles reverse a little bit because you know with the things that are happening with black lives matter you know mm -hmm. what i mean if mm -hmm. you got me talking really badly about uh black people which i never do no you know but what i'm saying is if i started speaking borderline a little bit like oh you shouldn't be saying stuff like that the roles is still reversed it's just now we're seeing it in different eyes you know what I mean? Because really, okay. I hope I haven't said anything that's offensive too. Because you know, the whole point is for us to be educated. Of course, I joke too much and everything. I hope I haven't like made like a joke that went too far. Because you know, you're my buddy. Yeah, so. you're fine. We're all in open. I'm an open book. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about Lori Cabot? What would you like to learn? Who she is and why she's popular. Well, of and course, if you are I guess, coming into the religion, wouldn't you have she be one of the first people you have to know? Yes. Well, I would tell you, she's well known in the community, and especially in the witch community, is because you know she made a lot of civil rights happen. Um, she fought what she believed in. She opened the first witch shop in the United States, or like I said, globally. Yeah. Um, you Isn't know, she the official witch of Salem, though. She is. She um oh. by the governor. Um, wow, she got legit signs. Thanks to the picture, which is that I do know. You know, Lori Cabot Yasmin has actually helped solve some crimes. She really? did, mm -hmm. yeah. She worked with, yeah, she's um, been on Oprah too. She's been on Oprah as well. Wow, I, yeah, no, I wasn't even aware of this. Yeah, because I was gonna say, you know, like, were there um, famous figures within the community, you know. Speaking, Yasmin, so, and this is inspiration from American Horror Story, but once again, you'll see how that makes sense. You know, in American Horror Story, when they had the storyline of Stevie Nicks, you know, a fictional oh, Stevie yeah, Nicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because it is actually based on a rumor that Stevie Nicks is a witch. That's been a rumor for years. So, of course, they played on that on the show. Is there any celebrities, Avi, that you know practice that or it's rumored they practice that? 
I actually had that written down. Like, no kidding. Look at this. Cause I did. <laughs> That's funny. <sweaty. laughs> yeah. I, I was going to eventually bring this up because I wasn't even sure if you guys were aware until, you know, you guys started bringing up. And it's funny that you said Stevie Nicks because actually you know it said it's rumored but i found it and i'm gonna link all articles uh talking about celebrity witches or any information about witches like generalized uh converse you know if they want to know more about witches and i'll link all that stuff in our description box but one of the three main ones that has been vocal actually talking about cb nicks she said she claims to believe in magic and says that magical things have happened to her and that's why people assumed it was rumors, but she, this is what she said herself. So that's why people um, immediately think when it comes to witches, like she would be a prominent figure that people always talk about. She's rumored to have done something to clothing. What is it? I can't remember what it is. Like it's rumored that she had done something to clothe to like her scarves that she would give to fans. What am I thinking of? Ooh, I feel so terrible. I can't remember what that um that rumor was. To say. But I know another. Yeah, but it was another rumor that fueled that you know about her. I did have a question though, like the whole. Um, there was a thing I heard, and I was wondering if you can explain it to me. Something about times three. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Threefold. Yeah, the threefold. Yeah, can you yeah. talk? To believe it or not, there's up to ten. Depends how. Really. There is, yeah. It really depends how, you know, things do backfire very quickly. Um, or sometimes it, it, may, it may not hurt you in this life. It may hurt you in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, and that can go up, you know, the tenfold is because it, it really depends how far you have to pay back for your, your sins or um, your, un, your undoings. Because you just mentioned, like, you know, how would a funeral work? Like, what happens when so a witch passes away? Oh. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> I'm not oh, sure. Okay. But um, I'm assuming a normal burial. I know um, a lot of witches who I've known who got buried in the, um, the military base the military um, cemetery in um, Pentagon those loved ones will actually has a pentacle because before you could not have a pentacle um interesting but so you could be a witch and join the army and stuff like uh, that yes you can and well, just, yeah well, but it's just like, like, it's the same thing you as can you but I'm just saying like how in the army though you know what I mean it's the army is huge <laughs> the uh, well uh, you or the, just the military in general like so I, I, I'm trying to figure out the question I want to ask because that's just interesting to me like you know somebody you know practicing this religion and then joining the military and everything like you know because I think I think crash with like the ways yeah yeah well which is we don't believe in war we we never had that, yeah that kind I mean, of thing. we never you know what I mean that was more Christians and the Romans and they always had war we never believed in war we got we get out of war um, yeah so that's why yeah, well, that's what I'm just like would a witch be in the army but wouldn't that be weird if you were to go to war if you don't like that kind of stuff so I just wonder is there like a uh, some people choose to be in a war to fight their country they love or want to support um our country they have rights to do everything they do as long as they do it for the good of all in the correct way um there's nothing wrong with that i think every witch will support that if you are going to fight for this country and fight what you believe in why not as long as you're doing for the good of all and for all good things and for all good reasons we that's, that's the important part in life and if it's not correct, you can pay an afterlife. But if you find think this is correct for you, then do it. There's nothing wrong. Mm. That would make sense. The only thing is wrong is listening to naysayers. Then you can't do that. You can't do this. Then I would not. I would not have done what I would love to do. I'll probably be miserable in my bedroom. <laughs> That's more of a so, question is you know how is. 
racism. Can witches be racist? Can witches be political? Can witches be like, all lives matter, you not welcome to our coven? Like, does that happen? Can that happen, I guess? Uh, can, uh, it makes me want to say, well, it's not supposed to happen, but it's kind of like saying, is this all Christian racist and it's all Christian? Yeah, even though yeah, in the Bible, like, I, I can't, we don't we, teach that at all, but Pete, it doesn't stop them. We don't teach that in our beliefs, in our community. And uh, as far as I have seen, I have not seen, I've seen only great people out of the community helping and supporting um, Black Lives Matters yeah. and yeah. I'm supporting um, civil right um, civil right movements um, fighting forward because it's it, all the witches I've met, including you know up in Salem, they've been so supportive because you know we believe you have the higher power now. Even even royalties have lost their crown just because you're wearing a badge. This is my thing. Just this will happen. I guess when it um, you know comes into that, do witches police their own witches? Like for example, if somebody in my religion, Christianity, did something ignorant, of course you're gonna have half of Christians saying this is wrong, this is not you know what the Bible says, and you're gonna have the other half going, oh yeah, I co-sign this because at the end of the day, this is written and that other thing is written. And then I can sit here as a Christian, I could be like, okay, this person's ignorant. I don't want nothing to do with that. Or maybe I agree with them, like in the sense. Is that how it is with you guys when it comes to your religion? Or do you go like, yo, find out who that person is. They're making our religion look bad. Remove them from our coven. This is not the way. Because, you know, even like with Catholics, they can excommunicate people from the church. Like Madonna did the What's It Called music video I can't uh, remember. Virgin. You, you, yeah you you know and the church wanted to excommunicate her like nope we don't want you to even say you're catholic that's wild so well, I'm just like, we, we will neutralize anything harmful that's been said to us number one you know what i mean we do not we do not take it into us because remember our energy travels through space through walls you know and it's been proved by science everything we put out there comes back to you um right. it, it, it's a circle so now person, i'm sorry i apologize no i'm just saying going back to your story about there's someone in our coven in our community doing something that's giving us a bad name mm -hmm. we try to make sure we get together and make them do something else better in their lives so which is we will get together and be like let's do a spell or let's do something that project, they will come up in something in their head to do something better in their lives. That's the best way we can do. Put some, some projects in their mind, be a painter, something. Um, and that has happened before in a coven. You know, people have, you know, waved wands around the street saying, look what I can do, look what I can do and giving us a bad name. So a lot of witches, you know, we, we, we did our magic for the good of all. If it comes, it will come to be. We do not say, make it happen. We have to ask <laughs> if this is correct. <laughs> we don't want nothing, we don't want no payback. If this is correct, it will come to be. And actually two weeks later, she got a phone call and she got promoted and she had to move cross country. So, you know, stuff like that, you want to give them something else to focus on. That's the best way to do it. Put something in our mind to focus on, something better to focus on. You know, um, you, you don't want to um, take that grudge in you. Um, you want to take action, but for the good of all. And that's the most important part to do right now. And then what about, because um, I know a lot of people use um, card readings, because I, I feel like there's always misconceptions because most people who look at tarot cards reading, right? And either pendulum works. Um, I laugh because, you know, now that I've been practicing on my own and uh, it's funny because I'm no longer in that thought mind that things that I see on TV is actually real. Maybe when before, sure, but now because I'm more wiser and I've been accepting uh, things for what they are, but I guess for those who really don't understand the concept, what is essentially terror reading? 
tarot reading is it pretty much opens our um, panel gland, the tiny piece shade in the middle of your gland. So when you're looking at a card, you start visualizing what that card is. Now remember, the you can hold um, a pair of card. It does not always mean what that means. Sometimes you get a vision of a, a clown <laughs> and you're like, what, what is this clown doing in my head? Say it. Because you know, you never know why the clown pops up. I know like my mentor, she was talking about one of her card had wands, mm -hmm. right? And she kept getting vision of a leak because I guess it looks like a pipe with a bunch of leaks. And she's like, is there like a pipe leaking down your cellar? And she was like, how do you know? <laughs> and I was like, because of this. And she was like, just because of that. What? What, what, what card? So never look at a card as is. That's the main. Yep. That's what I've always thought. And Catherine, I know we talked about this before. And I actually had a healthy conversation with my cousin last night where, and it's funny because she's going to listen to the podcast. So yeah. hi. <laughs> So the thing is, it's funny because one of the biggest fears in the card is either going to be the devil card or the death card. And it's oh, funny. My two favorite wait, cards. Let me tell you, watching novelas growing up, the way the Hispanic writers write, or Hispanic Latino, but the way they write about the death card in American and uh, Hispanic Latino culture is that death means you will die tomorrow. And it's just like, that's not even it. And I told my cousin that too. I was like, everything, you know, you know, when it comes to witches and the craft and everything, and I tell them, you know, it's cute for the fantasy, but everything, you know, in media, it's completely wrong in, in some sense, because yeah. I'm just like the death card, you know, cause she's, you know, afraid of getting a reading because, oh, the death card comes and now I have to prepare myself that I'm going to die. And I was like, no, that's not what it even means, you know? And I laugh sometimes. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you this. Um, well, the tarot card is, is, is my fun. I love playing with tarot cards. I have so many decks right now. I don't even Same. I have so many decks. Catherine, I see your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did a tarot card not too long ago, and I told her she was going to meet someone. Oh, I remember. I told her the yes, story. Yes. I told her the story oh, yes. the day before Please yesterday. The, audience the story. Oh, my God. Our listeners has to it, let the listeners know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who do you want to tell? Catherine, should you tell or you want me to tell? You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so I remember I was doing a three reading for mm -hmm. her. So in three reading cards, it's very simple, very complex. So I usually do the past, present, and future. And when that future popped up and she was like, ah, she was kind of doubting it. I can tell her in her head, but I was like, you're going to be meeting someone. It's going to be very interesting in your life. It's probably going to change you. <laughs> And I remember, I'm just so like, is it a guy? <laughs> and she was like, I don't know. I can't really tell you. I'm not a psychic. Didn't you say that I'm not a psychic, Catherine? <laughs> Which is ironic. <laughs> so I'm just over here thinking, oh shit, you can tell the future. But you're over here like, sweetheart, I just read your palm. I'm not a freaking psychic, okay? Like, stop watching movies. <laughs> like, and, I ended, and I ended up meeting my long lost cousin, yeah. from a different country which we will do in a future episode we're gonna definitely talk about that hopefully it's not this season next season but we're gonna address that well, we're gonna get to that i definitely want to get to that because i want him to be a guest on this show too so we can talk about that like that's wild but anyways so, I mean... <laughs> you know i i thought it was amazing and i always told Catherine, that things will open the door for you and this was one of it. And I, I'm very proud of you um, meeting and um, seeing your lost relative. And I think that's very an honor and um, great job for that. And um, the tarot card, by, by the way, if you put it upside down, I don't know who came up with that. <laughs> People really? What happens if you put it upside down? No, there's the upright and the reversal of tarot cards because they have different meanings. Yeah, so I some, found that strange. Yeah. yeah, someone came up saying if it's upside down, it's bad. Sideways. To I don't know who came up with that. There's so many things in a 
in a tarot card deck that is negative. You don't need to put it upside down to figure out what bad is going to happen. And the death, by the way, and the death means not someone's going to die. Yeah, I was going to say, please explain that to our viewers who... The, the death means you're going you're leaving this world and going to a new fresh start in life a new job a new beginning in life you're leaving your old uh i would say a bad relationship a toxic relationship and you're heading to a new journey in life that's the the death behind you the past um the devil which is do not believe in devil so the devil represents um a dna means you are different from, you could be adopted or you're different from your family. You're the, the black sheep or you, you stand out. So that is what the devil is. Yeah, because I remember when I was learning tarot reading and again, it, it goes back to, um, I don't even, I know I talked about this off camera with you both, but I don't remember mentioning this at all in the podcast, but like, you know, um, or I probably did where, you know, it's, it, again, I go back to the girl who was Wiccan and she was the one who introduced me to it. And she actually gave me my first spell book. And I, I swear to you, I know my mom's going to listen to this episode, but I swear to you, I used to hide the spell book in my closet because I knew, or, you know, the Catholic religion is like, no, 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 don't do that. You know? And so all of a sudden it just disappears. I think she threw it away because she found out what it was. But like, I remember I got my first uh, tarot cards with that too. And I remember she, you know, cause like, again, it goes back to novellas, you know what I mean? Like where, you know, the, the gypsy of the novella or like the, the brujaria or the bruja in the novella would always pull out the death card and be like, Te vas a morir, or something, you know, it'll be like, you're going to die or like your son is going to be ill and die. And I was just like, oh my God, I was always scared. But then she ended up letting me know, no girl, that's not what it means. <laughs> and I always felt stupid after that. And it's funny because one of our famous, our favorite uh, actresses, Angelique Boyer, she was in Tres Veces hey. Ana. Yeah, she was in the novela called Tres Veces Ana, meaning uh, three different Anas. And uh, the character's mom went to go visit the, the witch of the public uh, of the of the little town, and I remember the death card comes out. And when I watched that scene, all I have to do was laugh because I'm like, child, no. <laughs> I, was, I was like, this poor lady spent her money, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Oh, it's so funny because well, you know, those shows they always like a little bit of drama. I feel like you know, yeah. stuff I love a little bit of drama. I know we do, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell the Yep. And so I guess I'll, I'll, do you have another question? No. Okay. And um, I guess I'll, you know, ask this one last question before we wrap up the interview is for all of our growing little baby witches out there, mm -hmm. what would you advise them? Because, you know, it, it could be someone who's literally, you know, they're like eight years old exploring, or they could be someone like me who literally left the faith to, you know, uh, practice this new faith. So I guess because a lot of questions I always see online, and um, and it's it's funny because I never see uh, there's no real answers to this, but like I'm just kind of wondering what would you advise them, you know, if they want to start practicing or they feel like this is their calling read read a lot and don't read one book in one tradition in one coven you have to read at least a lot of different traditions and covens where you can actually pick one one that makes sense to you one that it has, you have a connection with mm -hmm. um it, it's it's a big thing it's a lot of responsibility we're going back to responsibility because just calling yourself a witch doesn't mean you're a witch, isn't it? And that's any other religion. You know, you got to learn from it, grow from it, know the holidays. Um, you got to actually celebrate the holidays. That's the most important part. Yeah. Um, because you want to know, you know, remember the other side of the, the, the spectrum 
of the earth, you know, they're watching. They want, you know what I mean? That's what we believe, they're watching. So you gotta celebrate the holidays. You gotta know the holidays. You gotta know the, um, the history, the mythology of behind it. And once you find one, you be good at it. Um, and find a, a, a tutor, of course. You, you can find teachers um, to guide you and help you and go to a coven. You know what I mean? And learn from the coven as well. Well, this has just been like really, really insightful. What do you think, Yasmin? Like, I'm, I'm really I think we could learn a little bit more from what uh, I, origi- you know, I originally knew because, you know, again, I haven't picked out any books, but most because I'm such a visual because, you know, off, um, you know, when we were talking on the phone, as you can see, you know, like I write uh, scripts, I'm always editing and I'm such a visual person, you know, it's funny because I go on YouTube and sometimes look at um, YouTubers. Because there are honest witches out there. Um, I know there's one, I can't remember her name, but there's one I watch. She's from Florida. And a lot of, well, a lot of her teachings comes from like paganism. So if I could remember her name, that would be great. <laughs> but like some of the things that uh, I'll go and search for is uh, YouTube. And again, I'm still new to the realm. And so, um, uh, you know, I should be reading more actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, reading is good. Yeah, because you know, you know, I mean, I've I've seen amazing, um, of course, amazing, some amazing witches out there, um, and they do such a good job, especially their book of shadows. I think that's oh, all which yeah. basically into beautiful book of shadows, beautiful art, um, because you know our religions, um, we need our, our religion is very, very um, all about the book of shadows, all about studying, yeah. learning learning the um, astrological signs and charts that's huge for us um we're in agricultural cycles um that's huge um the moon cycles is huge for us um and that's something we have to learn um and grow with it yeah so you have any more questions because i'm all questioned out yeah no that's all that i time. think well, good, and I hope you guys know it is a waning moon happening right now. So waning moons are really, really good for banishing any um, obstacles in your life. So this is a good time to do so. Um, light a white candle or um, neutralize any harmful things. So okay. it's happening right now. So. so we are gonna wrap up, Yasmin, yes. for at least this interview section. Yes. The interview section. So, yeah. thank you so much, Avi. I am so happy you did this. And it really means a lot because you're our first guest. Yes. Also, our first witch guest, which I, I was really excited yes. about. So. And before we actually wrap up, we can, you know, take at least one more minute to mention that you did say that you were going to open a store in the future. Or you were thinking, oh, yes. About yes. 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 It's called The Raven's Corner. Raven, um, we just got a website called ravenscoin.org um, okay. because it's part of an organization I'm working on. Um, so it's going to be, you know, lecturing is going to be huge for me, teaching other people about witchcraft and who we are um, and the teaching about herbs and stones and crystals. Oh, that's right, my alley right there. Yeah, and this is, of I course, for I will be promoting it. <laughs> yes. yeah, I will say, send you all the information that you need because yeah, you know, that's exactly what I was about to ask for. Yeah. Like, so can we assume in the future once we get that information, we can put it on the podcast? I guess after we wrap this, Avi is going to be joining us for Dambra. That's wild. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we will see you in a bit for Dambra. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. And I'm. I hope I answer all your questions. Oh, and you did. Uh, yes. Thank you. And thank you for having me. I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I appreciate that you came in. And of course, you know, in this podcast, we welcome everyone with an open heart, no matter your race, your religion, whatever your opinion is. Like, it's always exciting to be informed and to be open minded to, you know, what people are really into. Well, I think of course, I think I, I think we're all here educating, and I think if yeah. witches out there hide themselves, they're not going to know who we are. Like here, I chose to wear black, and then 
when I become my high priest, I'm going to wear robes everywhere and every day because <laughs> um, I want to know people who know who we are and what we are and what we do. And I'm a little upset that the nuns, they're not going to be able to wear their robes anymore. Oh. Uh, it's very sad. It's very disappointing because I think they should. I think people need to find a spiritual guide. Like if I'm on the street, gl gliding on the street, someone should come and say, hey, I need a spiritual guide from you. And I think that's what nuns were. But um, I'm not sure why they took their robes out, but they should claim it back. So hopefully they would do that in the future. Hi guys, as usual, I have a wonderful partnership with a brand called Salty Mermaid Swimwear. They have amazing swimsuits for the guy in your life, the girl in your life, or whomever or however you identify. It's for all people, and the best part about it is that some of the money goes to charity every time you do a purchase. So. Use the code SALTY15CAT, tell them CAT sent you. Again, that's SALTY15CAT, tell them CAT sent you, and you get 50% off your purchase. Yay! Salty somewhere. Welcome back, you guys. <laughs> and we're about to do our first segment, The Cheese May Corner, where we talk about the latest gossip. Hey, so what's going on? Okay, so the LA Times just put out an article, which uh, props to them for making this article because this is the change that we want to see. So the article is titled, Why One Hollywood Agent Left WME to Start His Own Diverse Management Firm. And just to summarize this um, article, and I'll link the article down into our description box again. So, Props to this guy because, you know, this is what we've been talking about since back in 2016. What started the conversation is that there, I don't know if this film, um, so there is a classic novel that is being casted for a film. Okay, so it's not yet in production. So I apologize if I'm mispronouncing this name, but for, for Rent Hit 451. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but I'll, I'll type it right here so everyone can see. And uh, the agency, uh, Philip, well, Philip Sun immediately thought of Michael B. Jordan for this role. So in the novel, it's pretty much talking about how um, a fire, uh, sorry, um, their main character, a firefighter who, bur who burns books in an oppressive society in the future was white. But uh, Sun wants to cast Michael B. Jordan, who is a black actor. And um, what's one of the things Sun said in the article is that, you know, nothing, it, it's about the story, right? It's about what was happening in the story that is most important and not the color of the person. You know, unless the story was more about um, the person in themselves, or if it's like a religion, then you wouldn't, you know, necessarily change the character. But the fact is being white wasn't the, you know, prominent thing in the story. So that's why he would like to cast Michael B. Jordan and props for him because he actually left an agency, agency excuse me, to make his own. And um, the, the point of it, of creating his own agency was because he was looking into more diverse diversity in Hollywood right diversity in terms of story diversity in acting so props to philip son for doing this because we need more people like him in the film industry because this is how we promote change you know and i'll link down the article because it goes really in depth is there any more cheese menus no nah, not for the moment but i just want to leave a little positivity you know, <laughs> I do want to put in, like an extra note to you that I do appreciate the fact that you said this because I remember reading just a while back in an article that Michael B. Jordan says that when he auditions, he always tells his agent to make sure he never gets auditioned for stereotype roles. He literally said, I don't audition for black roles. And they're like, what are you talking about? And he was just so like, I don't. He's like, when I have my agent, my agent gets me roles. He was like, you'd be surprised how many roles yeah. that I got that were meant for white people that were casted white. But as soon as they saw my audition, they decided to cast black. 
And now that you mention it, I'm thinking, is Son the same agent he was talking? It seems like he probably he was talking is, about to be honest. He's my yeah. agent. So I'm just like, this is the person he was talking about. And this was like a when the a year or two ago when the Black Panther was going on. You yeah. know, I just read up on it. Mm-hmm. All right. So interesting. Right. So I guess we're switching gears. Yes. So another statement called Okay, because I don't know what happened. I was just so like, did y'all turn your camera off? Sorry. <laughs> to another segment called Damn, Damn Bruh. Bruh. That's wild. That's wild. <laughs> and on Damn Bruh, That's Wild, I find a crazy story from around the world that is outrageous, that's funny, or just plain weird. And this story is from mirror.co.uk I- again. It seems like I'm normally getting most of them from. I never get my resources from this website only. But it seems like I'm getting most of them. So shout out to this source for always providing these weird news stories around the world that are actually true. It's not going to be gross like last week's, right? No, this is about a a guy. (laughs) So this is actually kind of anonymous. Actually, it is anonymous, but they gave the guy um, a name and they gave him the fictional name, named James. And I do apologize because of the camera that we're using to film this. I can't read the article's um, description at the top. Or do you guys mind if the camera splits for a second for that? No, no problem. Okay, I'm just going to read the title real quick. And it's called, I hired an escort and my best friend's mom turned up. So, I'm going to, yeah, you see? Yeah. So, Avi, you ready? You ready, Avi? Yeah, so I'm ready to explain what the story. <laughs> so there's a guy who's part of the United States Army. Mm-hmm. And he's he gets stationed. He's been in the army for a while. And he says that because he's in the army, he gets lonely and he doesn't want to get attached to anybody because of the way they travel all the time being deployed. I would know yeah. my brother is in the army. He hires escorts. So whenever he's like stationed in an area and he wants to go out or maybe he's like doing work for like a few days somewhere on behalf of the army, he'll go on a website and he'll look up escorts. And of course the escort will come, do her thing. They have fun, she gets paid, he gets happy and they go about their business. So there he was just doing his normal routine. He's been doing this about a few years now and he's going on the internet and everything. And he goes on a website and I actually know the name of this website. So if you're looking for an escort, it's envy.com. And this is envy with two N's people. It's E-N-N-Y dot, I'm sorry, E-N-N-V-Y. Sorry, my misspelling once again. It's E-N-N-V-Y dot com. If anybody's interested, you know, sex workers need money too. We don't shame sex work. Just yeah, of course. No, we don't. We have exactly. Love. Get that. The place of love is for everyone. Yeah, just saying. So he, look, he normally he says that they'll either show pictures of people or they'll show like their neck, uh, their neck down and everything. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this reading this article. That's how escort websites work. And he saw a body that was just banging. And this woman described her as a mistress, like a mistress type, you know, and he's just so like, yo, her body is tight. She looking beat. I don't know what she looks like in the face, but the body, I bet you it gonna match the face. That's all I know. <laughs> so he does his thing. And then, of course, the escort comes. He opens the door, ready to get laid. It turns out it's one of his closest friend's mom. That is wild right there. And be in mind, he did admit that he does occasionally look for escorts in his hometown. This was his hometown. So this is implied he was just at home on a regular day off, like, I'm going to get an escort. He didn't expect it to be his friend's mom. You know what I'm saying? Of course. And of course it was awkward when they looked at each other because it's just like, oh snap, like you're with my, like you're friends with my son. And he shook thinking, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. She's going to know me. Then she's going to freak out. You know what she did? They she still have- went to work. Oh. <laughs> yep. No. She said, listen, I understand. She didn't say these exact words, but it's really implied that she was just like, listen, I won't tell <laughs> if you shut your mouth. No, no. So I'm going to give you the ultimate happy ending you will ever experience. And he said he got that work. He literally got that walk. 
he really he did. Walked. He got that walk. So shout out to Cardi and shout out to Meg because he definitely got that walk. So what? right after he got that watch, she leaves and everything. And he's over here awkward, like, yo, I just slept with my best, one of my closest friend's mom. She's an escort. I'm so nervous. What if I see my friend? I kind of feel like a piece of crap because I still hit it, though. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. What a nice. So, he says that occasionally. You know, he still sees his friend. And he still sees his friend's mom every once in a blue moon. And they'll give each other like the, the look where it's kind of like, you know, like a one night stand where it's oh, like yeah. you and I both know what happened, but we're not going to talk about it ever. But we'll still give each other glances because you and I both know what happened. That's basically where their relationship is at this point. And he's over here thinking to himself like, dude, I slept with your mom. Like, yeah. And this is what he said. He was so this James person was so a little bit, you know, petrified by this right. you know experience he said just for anybody wondering i have not stopped looking up escorts because you know i'm just that's just me that's what i do right. but because of what happened i'm really really extra paranoid when i look for escorts in my own hometown because of this experience i'm even more paranoid now when i travel outside to different areas on behalf of my job the united states army just to do these tasks because i'm just wondering i don't want somebody's like you know cousin or sister to come up next and i'm like that's why but you know what i'm still here to know <laughs> That oh, is yeah. great. That's just, I don't, what? Homegirl still <laughs> making her money. She's still an escort. It ain't stop her grind. The mama's still doing it. She got a grown ass son and she still look good. That that just tells me. I used to say this, that I want to look so good that my, if I have a son, his like sons, his friends will go like, hi, Miss Cat. And I'd be like, hi, honey. And I'd be like, dude, your mom's hot. And then my son would be like, shut the <laughs> up, dude, Bobby. Clearly. I'm just saying in that cute way, you know, I just want to look, yeah. I want to look good when I'm older. Like, you know, to, for somebody to be like, your mom's hot. And then, and then you'd be like, shut up, John, the, you know. But how awkward is it that, you know, it could be next to your cousin? Like, <laughs> be the escort here? Ain't nobody being that, ooh, ooh. Girl, no. But yeah. that's wild though. That is Abby, what do you think? Uh, I've, I heard weird stories, trust me. Like, people, <laughs> you kind of have this, like, I, I, I have no words. <laughs> like, I, I've, I've known people who actually did not realize they were hooking up their lost cousins, believe it or not. Wow. Weird. You know, I mean, you, you, you it's just oh, no. weird. weird. Uh, you know, anyways, you will never see me on an escort sport. site. You will never see me looking up an escort. You know, I don't judge. That's all y'all. You know, yeah. make that money. Yeah. But yeah, that's the segment. Damn, bro. <laughs> wow, right there. We're basically done. We want to give a shout out to our artists of the week who I'm so excited because this is actually another friend and a wonderful artist who is Trippy A1O. So please follow Trippy A1O on all his platforms. Listen to his music, stream it. It's wonderful. You're going to love it. You're going to have fun. You're going to kiki. You're going to laugh and all that. Proud of you. When she see me on the block, shawty be smiling. Since you look in this direction for a while now. Thinking we should get together for a trial now. Hold it, let me roll this door to turn my phone off. Cause you know your nigga really move boulders. Like it's papers, smoking flavors. Damn. Shawty says she wanna fuck me on the island. When she see me on the block, shawty be smiling. Since you look in this direction for a while now. Thinking we should get together for a trial now. Hold it, let me roll this door to turn my phone off. Cause you know your nigga really move boulders. Like it's papers, smoke flavors. Damn. Shit. See, I wanna fuck with you, but I can't fuck with you the way you want me to, nah. Cause I know that if I fuck with you the way you want me to, you fuck around, start doing things that I don't want you to. Crazy. Like, damn, it's fucked up. Gotta show a little love, but don't touch. Gotta kick it to the curb and get a big butt. Hit it from the back, she like, ooh. Like, ooh, 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 ooh. Said we 
can just be chilling, smoking gas all day. Shawty says she here, but not attached, okay. Gripping on her ass, feet in the sand all day. In a trap all day, getting cash always. We could just be cool and smoking gas all day. Shawty says she here, but not attached, okay. Gripping on her ass, feet in the sand all day. In a trap all day, getting cash always. Ooh, Shawty says she wanna me on an island when she see me on a block shawty be smiling since you looking this direction for a while now thinking we should get together for a trial now hold it let me roll this door to turn my phone off cause you know you really move boulders like it's papers smoking flavors damn so ooh, shawty says she wanna f me on an island when she see me on a block shawty be smiling since you looking this direction for a while now thinking we should get together for a trial now hold it let me roll this door to turn It's papers, smoking flavors. When Damn. I'm digging from the back, she like, ooh, 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 ooh. I know you hear it clapping like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Damn. Shawty said she wanna fuck me on the island So I had to take a trip out to the island Just a pipe it, one night it Then I'm gone like lightning Good guess, all you see is eyeless When she see me on them blush, Shawty be smiling Really like how I be looking, she said I be stylish Good guess, all you see is eyeless We on autopilot Damn Ooh, Shawty said she wanna fuck me on the island When she see me on them blush, Shawty be smiling Since you look in this direction for a while now Thinking we should get together for When she see me on a block, shawty be smiling. Since you look in this direction for a while now, thinking we should get together for a trial now. Hold it, let me roll this door to turn my phone off. Cause you know you really move boulders like it's papers, smoking flavors down.